Awesome. Hey, everybody. Paul Cram's here with us again. It's been a while, Paul. It has been a while. It's <laughs> nice to nice to chat with you guys again. It is. Last time we were talking, Black Swan was like the new hotness. So it's it has been a couple of years. <laughs> Gosh, that makes us sound old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you just uh, finished work on. We were talking about it in the episode. We had discussed the movie Dust of War. Yes. Um, so why don't yes. you tell us a little bit about the movie? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I, I suppose I should tell everybody that I have a small a small part in the movie and that they should not blink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep your eyes peeled open and you'll see you'll see my my very dramatic, <laughs> my very dramatic scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I had a really good time, really, really good, good time filming it and stuff. So, yeah, I have a, I have a quick part in the film. Um, I don't know what you guys talked about it during the episode. But uh, did you give him a little bit of a rundown of what the movie's about? Yeah, we kind of got into um, my understanding is uh, that this is after a war with some sort of mysterious aliens, right? That have come down. Yes. Uh, and now the Earth is, it's kind of a Mad Maxi Road Warrior esque situation. Yep. 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 Which you definitely can see in, um, I was always, I was chuckling so much with the wardrobe cause I was like, it, <laughs> everybody's wardrobe. It reminded me of like, if, uh, the civil war was in a blender with like desert storm or something. That's so funny. You should say that. I said it to Amy. I was like, the aesthetic they chose is really wild because I'm like one minute I'm seeing somebody definitely, like you said, in like desert storm camo. And then the next minute I'm like, it looked like the postman. Like, I, you know, I kept waiting for Kevin Costner. <laughs> to ride up on a horse <laughs> yes and then you and then you put it all into kind of like this uh, yeah mad max like barren wasteland <laughs> um i think it's interesting to watch yeah i definitely i thought it was and it was interesting to act in too so <laughs> yeah it's really a fun it, it's it is really just different and like especially um you know no spoilers but th- when we got to the end of the movie i'm like okay now there's there's even more coming and i'm like i'm wondering if like so i assume you know that this is being set up for a sequel or a series maybe I actually don't know 100%. Um, it, it, I'm assuming yes. I want to say yes. Um, but I, that's not like something that I have my hands in. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I would have to assume yes. I'd, I, I'd have to agree with you that it's it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of being set up that way, yes. And, and maybe my character of Gelman will come back i don't know i would love that that um you know of course we again we don't want to spoil anything but like i said you have a bad streak of luck in this movie yes <laughs> a very quick bad streak of luck yes yeah. yes <laughs> uh, but no i would love it if they if they did another uh, uh you know obviously it, some of it i think so much so many so often with it it depends too on how the film does you know right now as it's as it's playing in the video on demand and and in all those places so uh if it does well i'm sure that they'll they'll get tony todd and doug jones to come back and and have fun again yeah that's really cool it was fun because like uh i was like well there's three people who have our pr- previous guests on the show all in this movie together because we had had Tony Todd and uh, Doug Jones on uh, a couple of times. Uh, I think Tony's been on twice and then we had Doug Jones on watch who, who was probably one of my absolute favorite uh, people in the world. He's he's the sweetest guy. Uh, yes, yes. I actually, I never met him. I've, he and I, our scenes never collided, but everybody that has ever come into contact with Doug Jones mm-hmm. says exactly what you just said. Like, they're like, he's the sweetest, best, most loving, kind person ever. So yep. I hear that and I'm like, gosh, I need to meet this person. <laughs> you need to make a point of it. If you ever happen to be working uh together again or if he's or if you just happen to be out in a convention circuit like track him down and have a conversation with him he he's one of the sweetest people with one of the most interesting life stories you'll ever hear um i don't know if you know or not but he was mac tonight from the yes McDonald's oh my commercials <laughs> yeah. i remember when i was a little kid i was like yes he's mac tonight the the piano playing moon <laughs> like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it's funny yeah. like i had a long history with him and didn't even know it <laughs> <laughs> oh i loved i loved can we say mcdonald's yeah, yeah it was not? he was with mcdonald's right yeah. that was that was what that was with that yeah. was that ad campaign that was back in like the mid 80s so he's been doing the makeup uh stuff for a long time and it's really cool to see him doing and like in this movie and uh dust of war that he's out of makeup and he's playing um a human being 
<laughs> and uh, and it's kind of a person who kind of you know it's a good part for him too because he's this caretaker for these children, um, yes. which he just seems yeah. like naturally that just seems the kind of person he is anyway. So very yeah cool. yeah no he 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 yeah when I saw it I was like ah oh, he's the perfect perfect guy for Jebediah Strom. I mean, he just, yeah, he, he's nice. It, it comes, I think a lot of who he is comes through in this character. <laughs> yeah. He's just a sweet, sweet guy. And then, uh, and then Tony Todd as uh Crispus, the, he's kind of the, uh, I kind of considered him like the, there's something that happens that made him, you know, was reminiscent of Lando Calrissian in a way. <laughs> And again, I can't spoil a story plot point without, you know, with saying much more about that. But um, I keep doing. Yeah. I'm like, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just agree with you. <laughs> yeah. So like there's an interesting like I think that might have I don't know if the writer considered that like if that was a deliberate nod to Empire or not. But um, but watching it, you can I mean, you can tell that the creators uh, definitely big sci fi fans with a lot of um little nods here and there in the movie. Um, so that, yeah. I think that makes it yeah. more fun to watch. Well, and it was fun to see too. I mean, I know we keep talking about the, the casting of it too, but I mean, it, it was fun to, when I was looking first getting involved with it and, and hearing about who was working on it and things like that, I was, I did, I was like, Gary Graham. I was like, gosh, he sounds familiar. Like, huh? Why does he sound familiar? And then I was like, Oh, wait a second. There's aliens in this movie. Oh, wait a second. Oh, Gary Graham. That makes perfect sense. Like, <laughs> Yeah. He's got a long track. Didn't I, I know I was a huge fan of alienation, the TV series. Like I, I watched every episode religiously of that show and he was really great um and then he all didn't didn't he also do some work on star trek maybe am i thinking he 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 did yeah and i actually when i was working on the film i was chatting with him a little bit and um because his and i's paths did cross i don't know why we never were like in a scene together but um yeah, and I, I I totally forget like the name of the character that he played is totally escaping me now. But he has a long relationship with aliens <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as as an actor. So well, that makes uh, that's another one of those things when you see it and you recognize like there was something I was like, well, first I was like, I'm getting a. I'm like, that guy's performance is very Billy Bob Thornton-esque. And then the more I watched it, I was like, no, I'm like, I know this guy from somewhere. And I had to go online and, you know, look him up. And I was just like, I know him from everywhere. <laughs> it's not somewhere, it's everywhere. Every science fiction show and movie I've seen, he's he's been, like, involved somehow, practically. He, he's been doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so great. That yeah. is so great. Yeah, I think it was... Actually, I think it was more than one thing for Star Trek, if I remember right. I think like he was on Voyager, had a part in that, and then I think, I think there was a couple of other things that he did too. Um, all of the Star Trek fans that are listening right now are probably cringing because oh, I'm, I'm so vague, <laughs> <laughs> and they know it front and back. Like, well, also Tony uh, Tony Todd was involved in Star Trek. He played a Klingon uh, pretty frequently in the Next Generation. Um, but ah, I'm yeah, jealous. yeah, yeah. So they got some Star Trek <laughs> alumni. Well, hopefully these new series they've they've been kicking around actually happen, and maybe maybe we'll see Paul Cram on uh, another Star Trek show. That'd be cool. Maybe, maybe. Actually, I th- before that happens, you're gonna probably see me. I just, I, I myself just got done filming a little, a little horror movie in Maine. So you'll probably see me in a, a few more scary films before, cool. before you see me as an alien. But yeah, <laughs> what's this? Uh, are you allowed to talk about the new film? Um, yeah, yeah, I am. I actually, it's, it's called, uh, anniversary is the title at the moment that seems like they always change the titles though. Once they kind of get closer to (laughs) closer to coming out, but, um, yeah, that I have a, I have a a little bit of a bigger part than what I did in dust of war, uh, in this new one that's coming out here. Who knows? It'll probably be about a year. So I, I'm, uh, if people are, are looking around in about a year, they'll probably see some stuff about the film anniversary. Um, let me think here. What can I tell you about it? Um, I can give you a really brief synopsis now that I've mentioned it. Uh, it's about three guys. One of them's a professor, one's a photographer, and one's like an assistant. And they're studying these really small towns. And they come across a town that uh, has a really weird vibe to it, weird history. And my character actually is the assistant. And there's these super pale creatures that he sees crawling around at night. And people don't really know who they are or what they are. And things get really creepy really fast and it's kind of fun <laughs> that sounds pretty intriguing i love small town horror like i'm a huge stephen king fan so like anything that's uh you know small town where something is awry i'm on board 
So. Oh, I love it. Well, I'll, I'll, you'll, you'll, if you like small town horror, you'll probably dig this one. There, some of the, some of the actors that they found, I was like, dear God, where did you find this person that is literally missing teeth? Like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I love the authentic. I think with horror, when you cast unknowns too and local people, uh, it, it elevates it because, um, you, you have no preconceived notions of who's going to do what or, you know, any expectations of, of characters, uh, you know, like you see someone like, uh, Charlize Theron in a horror film, you're like, okay, she's the pretty smart girl. She's going to probably make it out of this. Okay. But when you have like <laughs> yeah. a, these unknown people, like the guy who runs the hardware store and they're like, okay, you're going to play the guy who runs the hardware store. You may or may not be eaten by something. The right. audience I'll- isn't going to know. All bets are off. Um, although it would be brilliant, I think, if somebody cast Charlize Theron and, and she like died in the first two minutes and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pull a Drew Barrymore with her. <laughs> be like, whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 I I have to say too, like with the film anniversary, with all the they did cast a ton of like local. They filmed in. Um, like in the New England area of like Maine and 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 that kind of part of the country, um, but they cast a lot of oh, such a variety of ages, and I don't know about you guys, but when whenever I'm working on a film, I love it when, oh, and even actually Dust of War, I think they did a really good job on this too. But I love it when they cast when the cast is not just like a bunch of twenty somethings. Yeah, I agree with you. Um. And actually, I say that there's another film that I worked on called Kill Game that is kind of going to be coming out here. And most of the cast is very young, so that's always interesting. But um, I love it when, you know, like on Dust of War, you've got you've got Tony Todd, you've got Doug Jones, you've got myself, who doesn't really fall into their age bracket. And then you've got Bates Wilder, who I worked with. Um, Bates was the, like, bald guy that had the, the uh, big grizzly beard and the funky eye and <laughs> yeah good villain <laughs> yeah yeah very good very good villain um but it, it's I, I always love working with actors that are so seasoned i mean you just you can't get you can't when you're 20 you just can't play that kind of a role so <laughs> yeah i agree with you and i think a lot of times that happens like especially with younger independent filmmakers they want to make movies with people they kind of want to party with <laughs> <laughs> it almost feels like they're like, I don't want any kids on the set because we're probably going to be drinking. And you, you know what I mean? I hear like, it's, it's funny. Like a lot of filmmakers we know it's, it's literally the same people that they're, they're run, at least the indie filmmakers is a lot of the same people they're running with, you know, anyway. Yes. So, so it is, yes. it's like step outside of the comfort zone and get a diverse cast in there. You'll surprise yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I, um, even, uh, the, the kid that played little Wyatt in dust of war, um, I was shocked when I learned how old he was. He's actually older than he looks. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, I believe he is in high school. Oh really? And I, yeah, and I was like, "Good grief! He looks like he's like 12. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's sometimes that's you know that's a big asset when they get, uh, you know, because they have the mature a little more maturity, but they can play that younger role, and then you have, you know, they bring oh, the, the smarts to it. Yeah, so absolutely, that, that's always cool. Like uh, I think Andy Milanakis built a career on that, right? So. Yeah. You know, yes. Uh. I- <laughs> <laughs> so you're. Um. I was looking at your YouTube channel last night after watching the movie, and I was watching the the piece you did about filming in all of the snakes that were on oh set. Oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. I don't know. I I do have to ask because because I'm always curious. How do you feel about snakes? Okay, I have a I have mixed feelings. Recently, we did a convention. Uh, where our table mates were wild animal trainers and they had tarantulas and snakes. <laughs> and, um, and one of them uh, would creep, this one big white boa would creep into our booth every once in a while. Like it would come out of its pen and just all of a sudden I'd look over and it would be on the table next to me. And uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I, it freaked me out a little bit at first, but then I got used to it over the weekend and it was, you know, I started thinking about like, you know, like a dog or something, you know, uh, but <laughs> with what you were dealing with, it was a, a lot more intimidating to me. <laughs> well, the first thing that comes into my mind when, when you're telling that story is the word boa. And I'm like, you do realize that wraps itself around things and strangles them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, what we were dealing with, and 
here's where I feel a little naive at times is like, cause I grew up in the Midwest and we're filming in South Dakota and I get on set and we're filming in the badlands of South Dakota. And it just never occurred to me that there would be snakes. Like it just, I'm just like, you know, Oh, we're going to be on set making a movie outside, you know, great. And <laughs> I was just shocked when the snake wrangler, um, which I, I shared this in that YouTube video, but I was I was totally like my jaw dropped when she's like, oh, we need to look out for rattlesnakes because like we are in the hotbed of, of rattlesnakes here in South Dakota. And I, I just, in my head, I was just like, all those warning bells were like, wait a second, there's rattlesnakes out here? Like, wait a second, like, rattlesnakes can kill you. Like, they are venomous. And, like, <laughs> I could just see myself getting bit by a rattlesnake and, like, the eulogy would be like, he was such a good actor for those those few moments. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, any, any animal that, uh, you know, is low to the ground, you're never going to see it coming. You might hear it, but that, that could be the end of everything. I, that's just... <laughs> well, it, <laughs> and then you're in the water on top of it at one point. So I'm like, I know, I don't think rattlesnakes are, um, I don't know that do they, I don't know if they swim or not, but that's all I, I could think about that, when I saw you in the water. You know, that's really funny that you say that. Cause w during that scene, when I am in the water, like, uh, and you don't see it, they, you don't see it in the clip, but the, part of that stream was really deep. So I literally was like, had to swim across it. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and I was like, I did ask somebody, I was like, I was like, rattlesnakes can't swim, right? Like, I could just see me getting, like, what the heck? <laughs> um, as I'm, you know, covered in water and rattlesnakes, like, this would just be my, my nightmare. But um, rattlesnakes, I don't think they can swim. At least that's what somebody said. And that was not the snake wrangler. So maybe it was somebody that didn't know. I have no idea. <laughs> like, nah, you're fine. Because that's what, <laughs> I mean, where we're at in Ohio, we, and we were just camping last weekend, they have these, they have poisonous black snakes that do swim. And like, um, I, I think they're called water moccasins. Maybe I'm not sure, but well, water moccasins I am familiar with because I I grew up in Minnesota, and yeah, water moccasins are um, very frightening if you do see them because they yeah they're black, but they, when they open their mouth, it's all white, and it's just like wow, that's creepy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they should they should make a horror movie called Water Moccasin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't call me for that one, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I don't um, actually, think I'd be comfortable. Actually, I take that. that back. Do call me. I, I've <laughs> kind of tamed some of the fear of snakes. Um, you know, Dust of War was a good a good project to work on. Um, it was so interesting seeing the snake wrangler from afar. I actually didn't get super close, but like she would go through the sets, and uh, you know, if people watch the film, they'll see like a lot of the sets are just. I mean, they're literally in like these barren fields. And what the snake wrangler would do is she would walk through in her, you know, knee high leather boots and she would carry this big, thick rucksack. And she literally, by the time she would got from one end to the other, like it was weighted. Like you could tell there was a lot of things in that rucksack. Um, and in the back of my mind, I was always, I kept thinking, I was like, gosh, what does she do with all those snakes? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think she probably just let them go, but <laughs> I don't know. I had this weird thought in my head. I was like, I wonder if she has like an aquarium at home that she keeps them in and gives them funky names like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sir Lancelot or I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's like, I had the same thought when we were with those animal wranglers at that convention. Like I said, well, you're in a convention hall. Well, you know, these animals aren't staying in the hall overnight. They're taking them back to their hotel room. And you're like what does the housekeeping staff think, you know, when they come in to clean the room <laughs> that there's all these aquariums with spiders and snakes and there were, they had a right. baby alligator with them too. Right. Or do they ha not have aquariums? Maybe they just let them coil up on the bed or I, <laughs> <laughs> I think you just put the do not disturb sign up and, and call it a weekend oh at that point. Yeah. But well, and, and and I guess the the double whammy for me when, when she was telling me about these, these snakes is she's like, you know, Rattlesnakes are really docile. Like they'll let you know. Like they'll shake their tail and they'll try to get away from you before they'd actually bite you. You know. And I'm like, oh, that's good. You know. Um, and she's like, so you know, just kind of don't move. Like what the protocol was for everybody on set. I'm sure they told this to Tony Todd and them too. Uh, was if you see a snake, you stop and you just scream snake. You know, don't move because you don't want to run through like a nest of 
of rattlers or something like that. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's really smart. Um, but the but the, what the double whammy was was there's also these snakes that are called bull snakes. Yeah, and I didn't realize like bull snakes are like constrictors and they're really aggressive. Like they are not nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remembered, I remember like one of my sisters one time had, had seen a bull snake and it chased her when she was little. And she always would like tell me, she's like, Oh my gosh, those snakes are so mean. Like they will like, like chase you down. And like, I, I had like a phobia of snakes, but then when I heard there was bull snakes out there too, like I just had these memories of my sister telling me like how, how, uh, <laughs> scared she was. And I was like, I don't know what to do anymore because like my phobia has now ratcheted to there's snakes out here that can bite me and kill me. And there's snakes that are going to climb up and choke me <laughs> as we're making this movie. Like I just can't win here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but fortunately it, it all worked out really well. I didn't see any snake except from afar and, and uh, none of the snakes came in the water with me, which was really good. The only person that came in the water with me was the director, um, Andrew Keitlinger, which I thought was a nice gesture <laughs> while we were, while we were filming. And he's like, well, if you've got to get all wet and, and swim in that water, I might, I'll get in there with you too, which I thought was really nice. So <laughs> I saw that still photo in your YouTube video and it, it kind of cracked me up because it just looks like a naked man standing like a statue in the river while you're you're shooting <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be funny if he wasn't that wasn't the director <laughs> like, <laughs> just another random guy <laughs> he's doing his laundry who is that guy over there by the way the naked guy that's not in the scene <laughs> uh, paul this is uh this has been great i'm so glad i caught you at a good time and we were able to get this in i know the movie's been out since the third um so what where are the best places for people to find you and to find dust of war I think the best place for people to start finding the film um, is I would go just to like iTunes or even like Amazon if you want to watch the film. Uh, and then if you want to dig into like some bios and, and get information about who made the film and all that fun stuff, people can go to dustofwarmovie.com. And there's all a whole bunch of stuff on there, you know, about like the cast and the crew. And they have some blog information about different awards that the film has done. Um, some people might like to know that the film played like at Comic-Con and different festivals like that, too. So you can get all that information at dustofwarmovie.com. And then if people are even wanting to dig even deeper, they can find out more about me on my website, which is paulcramactor.com. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Paul. It was a pleasure. I look forward to uh, seeing your next film. And uh, thanks again for taking the time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Great. Great.